Okay, so in this project, we're going to create a new Versal AI Edge uh, application. We're going to do this by starting a new project. I'm using 2023.2 version of Vivado. Uh, we're going to call this 950 Live. Uh, we're going to store that in my standard project area. We're going to store an RTL, create an RTL project. We're not going to have any sources at this time. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to come to the boards. We're going to look for the trends board and we're going to search on 950 because this is the board that we have installed. As you can see, that's picking up on the Versal AI Edge 2302 device. So once we've got that, we're going to create a project uh, that shows this. It's going to open relatively quickly in Vivado and then we're going to create a block design. I'm going to leave the block design name as it is defaulted to. Uh, and once that block design is open, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to add a control interfaces and processing system onto the um, block diagram. It'll take a few seconds once we once it's been added. So this block uh, initially, if we double click on it, uh, we can see the recustomization. There's no real configuration behind here, so it's not aware of what board it's working with. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing connected or, or nothing uh, nothing configured. Uh, what we want to do is we want to, of course, make sure that this is possible uh, for working with our Trends TE. 0950 board so we're going to run the block automation on this and we're going to leave these sets as defaults actually we're going to set the ddr memory controller uh, and we're going to click on ok there it's going to take a few seconds while it applies all of the configurations and all of the settings that are needed uh, to the uh, to the project once we've got this, we'll see that we now have the SIPS block, which is up and running. And it's got its network on chip interfaces uh, defined and connected to the network on chip. The network on chip obviously is connected to the external DDR4. We're going to make some changes to this now to connect in the AXI uh, block also. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the SIPS block again. And we'll do a much deeper dive in a, follow, in a future blog onto this. But once we've got this PS enabled, we're going to go to this element here, the PSPMC. Uh, we're going to go to the clocking element, to the output clocks, to the PMC clocks, to the fabric clocks, and we're going to turn on a, uh, a fabric clock. We're also going to go to PSPL interfaces. And we're going to enable one of the um, one of the resets. You can see also as well as the knock interfaces that we've got the AXI interface as well uh, that we can use if we want. And we're going to click on finish for that. What we'll see is this will add us a new clock, uh, a new PL clock output and a new PL clock reset appearing down the bottom. Uh, we're then going to double click on the network on chip and we're going to recustomize that. If we look at the network on chip, we can see initially we've got the DDR basic set up there for us. So up for the DDR that's uh, the DDR4 that's on the trend uh, on the trends board. We can see the inputs here. So we've got here there have been six inputs defined. We can add other ones if they, we want to. Uh, these are connected to the uh, PS cache coherent interconnect, the low power domain, and the uh, PMC. For the time being, we're not going to leave any inter-knock inputs on there. Uh, we're going to come to the outputs and we're going to enable an output. Uh, so we're going to have one master AXI output and that's going to be connected to the PL. We're not going to have any uh, parity on it. And then we're going to come to the connectivity tab here and we're going to make sure that on the connectivity tab we've connected such that the uh, knock routing is such that the slave AXI0, which is connected to the PS uh, cache coherent interconnect, can connect to the uh, master AXI that we've just instantiated, and also that the real time programming unit can also has that same connection from its slave interface. As you'll see, the other foot, the other connections are all connecting through to the memory controller ports in the uh, in the DDR controller. Uh, so we'll click on OK there, and we'll see that we get a DDR. Uh, sorry, we get a memory interface as well as the DDR. 
what we're going to do then is we're going to come here and we're going to do a BRAM. So we're going to put a BRAM controller on here. We're going to double click this and we're only going to have one BRAM uh, put on there. And then if we run the connection automation uh, on the BRAM, uh, we can select here, we can select for the clock, we can select the clock should be the PL, uh, the PL reference clock. Uh, it's going to connect to the uh, to the SIPs there, uh, and we we'll click OK. And then, if we re re remove this, rejiggle this, what we can see is that we now have a network on chips connected to the master output is connected to the BRAM AXI controller, which has got a BRAM connected to it. Uh, we've got the clock interface here. Everything's connected to this PL uh, this PL ref clock. There's been another clock added, of course, to the um, to the network on chip, and all that remains is to do is connect the reset there to the external reset. So we've got an external reset if we uh, if we so desire. And I'm also just going to add in a constant block uh, and connect that to the reg enables down here, uh, such that we have uh, such that we have that. Once we've got this, it's a relatively simple point. We're going to click on save of this design. Going to take a few, going to take a few seconds. I'm going to actually at this point, I'm going to uh, create the uh, HDL wrapper. which will take a few seconds. This is the HDL wrapper that's going to allow for synthesis and place and root. And you'll see then this is going to also create our uh, network on chip solution. So we're going to validate our design in a moment as well. Hopefully this shouldn't take too much longer. There we go. Once we've done that, we can see down here we now get the NOC quality of service, such we can take a look and edit that. We can see that we can see how the network on chip is connected. So we can see from the SIPs interfaces, the network points are going down to the DDR, and there's also a point going across to the PL. And like I say, we'll we'll look at this in another blog uh, in a lot more in a lot more detail. In the address editor, we just need to double check that all these uh, the BRAM controllers. Our network are mapped into the network as we expect, and they are. Uh, so now we can uh, come back to our diagram. We can validate our design. It's already in a validated uh, state. Uh, so now we're in a good position that we can uh, create our bitstream and then export that. Let's create that now, and then we'll come back and we'll jump across into Vitus and see it running on the hardware. So with the device image built and the uh, XSA exported, the next step is to open Vitus uh, and create some software applications. Of course, for this, we need a workspace. So I'm just going to create a workspace for this project. Call this workspace live. And I'm going to launch that. This will open Vitus and allow us to then create our platform and our application <coughs> and our application. So to get started with this, we're going to click on create application. We're going to navigate uh, onto the next tab. We're going to pick a hardware XSA to export this from. Uh, and we're going to go to where we've just created our uh, exported our design which we can see here it'll take a few seconds for it to read the hardware specification click on next we're going to give this a name of MZ529 because this is the uh, 529 micro Z chronicles um, we're going to pick this on um, Cortex Zero and we're going to run a standalone operating system on it. And we're going to create a Hello World application.
once we've got that we will see the project of course we'll see the project here and we will see the uh, we will see the platform um, we're going to open the sources file the hello world.c uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to add in a command to do a 32-bit write to the address of 210 one two three four one two three four which is where the um bram appears when we talk to it over the uh knock memory address space if you're wondering where i got the zill out 32 from this is defined within the uh, zill io.h uh, which is included in the um in the in the board support package so we will include this as well um, so we can see that so now hopefully we've got a simple modified program uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click the hammer to build this should take a few seconds for it to build uh, once it's built our application there what we're going to do is we're going to click on debug and launch hardware debug uh, and this will configure the Versal device that we're using the 2302 uh, it will doubt it will download the device image to configure the network on chip and the programmable logic as we want to configure the sips as we want and then it will download obviously our, our application and pause uh, at uh, time to do that okay so what we'll see then is the application download and and debug what we want to do is we want to look in the memory monitor at the address before we start anything off of 201 and we'll see here that we can see the bram contents and we can see these are all empty uh, at zero we can then use our simple application we can just step over uh, this if we want to we can see the hello world coming out we can see the hello world like, successfully coming out on the thing as we step through and we run the Zill 32, if you keep an eye on the monitor contents there, what you will see as we step through is that BRAM address changes and updates. So that shows that we've nicely got control of the BRAM and that we're talking to and from it over the network on chip.